Abschluss nicht das, was andere nicht können. Und äh, so ein Atelier aus der Brandkrisch, aus der Kopfkontakter äh, Brain Factory, äh, dann melden Sie sich bitte bei mir. Ne? Aber um 20 Uhr geht es los mit einer kleinen Ansprache. Musikalisches Programm war ja Ihnen auch bekannt gemacht worden. Cyber Romeo, ne? featuring Schlangenbader and Sam Johnson. <lacht> Die Herren von 68 hörten hell, die nordische Totengöttin nahm die Tür klopfen, aber herein kam nur Helmut. Von 1984 hatte ich eigentlich gar keine Angst, der Mann ist ja schließlich Orwell. SDI war nämlich der Trend zum starken, durchsetzungsfähigen Individuum. Als dass ich 1985 in Bonn die Weltbühne mit meiner Devise kein Krawall im All abreute, auch um klarzustellen, wer die globale Unordnung stiftet. Boris Decker mit seinem bum bum tennis hat dann allerdings schnell das Interesse wieder vom Weltraum nach Wimbledon verlagert. Ein Gau, der uns ganz gaga machte, leitete fast lautlos den größten anzunehmenden geschichtlichen Aufbruch ein. Doch 1987 sagten sich die Berliner, lasst uns leben. Feiern zwar gleich 750 Mal, aber in einem Orbit ohne Zucker, denn die Stadt war geteilt. Die Treffsicherheit in Sport und Politik machte jedoch riesige Fortschritte. Sie gewann den Golden Slam, er wollte ruhmreich in Rente gehen und auch abrücken. Zeit also für eine deutlich demokratischere Republik, ohne Schlupflochabfertigung, ohne Gewalt. Die Giga-Revolution für Menschlichkeit und Recht und Freiheit. Neben Werbung und Gigabytes durchbrach auch ein höheres Zahlenbewusstsein, 200 Jahre nach der Bestie, die Dell Berlin. So wurde DM das Allheilmittel. Die Frage aber war, konnte es ganz ohne Blüten blühende Landschaften geben? Das mag rückwärts gelesen Kramer gibt. Dafür fand ich schon 1991 zwischen Golfkrieg und Datenautobahn die utopische Weltfriedensformel. Das war während der Art Futura. Und zwar die Dialektik zwischen einem Datensoll und der Entsendung von Soldaten. Wer meint, Deutschland soll Soldaten schicken, der Stadt hat. Politisch korrekt muss es heißen, Deutschland soll Daten schicken. Gibt es ein Grundrecht auf Daten? Dear visitors, dear artists, dear art lovers, dear people of the world. There has been a time when leadership through artists was very popular. Not that the artists took the power, but there were enough powerful people which took the artists very seriously. The Renaissance wouldn't be this big cultural heritage for the whole mankind without the significant changes in the cooperation between the ordinary power from kings and popes and the masters of the art. The, rule, the revolution was silent, while the authority of the artists became strong. Everything was possible and seemed to be eternal. The so-called post-histoire was a result of a pluralism which offered more and more possibilities to everybody. Sure, there were also pessimists who tried to warn people to have too much illusions. But the game once started was too fascinating and therefore sex and drugs and rock and roll conquered the world. But since the masters of the universe, how the famous American writer Tom Wolfe called the Wall Street heroes of the 80s, in this fabulous book, The Bonfire of Vanities, began to establish the finance industry, artists or hearts, or hearts, had, or had hearts, no, sorry, <laughs> or had to work harder and harder, to keep distance to and to interpret the system and to survive, or they became winners who took it all. With the fall of the war, it seemed that heaven on earth, as promised by the communists, could never become reality. Capitalism was too strong and always better prepared to sudden surprises. In case of catastrophes, and keep in mind that the subtitle of this exhibition is 
artists, crisis and catastrophes, capitalists were able to tell the people the simple truth like shit happened because nobody had, to, had promised a road garden. In opposite, the communists had to declare how it was our mistake. But neither the state was compromised when the daily life was disturbed by bigger accidents, for example, which nobody could foresee. Today, after decades of joy and fun, times are going to changing again, and pretty good privacy gets a strange taste. The rich who dominate the flow of things which are determined to happen lost the contact to the people. And since business at its best yes. pretends to be the best art as well, how already Andy Warhol tried to teach at least his best friends, the art itself is losing more and more authority. For sure, it's, it's still a privilege to be an artist, as long as the finance industry functions. People losing their jobs can, can spend the time having new ideas. But since the finance industry is in a similar situation as the communists were 30 years ago, the fate is conquering the world. And this leads to absolutely crazy results. Populism, to make it clear, is a result of the failing of capitalist methods. And these methods fail because people in the whole world are going to become or too proud to be exploited, and they are too clever. Therefore, it is time to stone the monkeys with the weapons. Let's have a little look to this uh, sculpture. Who name, who, 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 who want to go to war? It's time for a new Occupy Wall Street movement because the finance industry is our main enemy. Forget all the Schäuble's from Germany and remind the former federal president Köhler who taught us that the finance markets are monsters. It's time for new creative right line, which helps the people to become clever protesters. Artists of Berlin, artists of the world, time has come for a big bang of new emotions and for compassion without any aggression. Yes. Democratic heroes should be welcome, and artists should become Democrats, no more dictators. The dictatorship of art makes no sense anymore since fake politics abolished the power of the truth. Thank you very much. Hallo, hallo? Ja. Wir sind Cyber Romeo, Sam Johnson, Elektronik, Manga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Extreme ich die Augen. Ein, zwei, drei Klamotten. Da stecke ich auf einen Schnee und hätte es gewonnen. Und du so Ja, 
It's okay. It's okay. No.